send me. Here I am, send me. We are in a time, friends, where we all know what we have done in the past. We all know what messages we have been given. But it is time <laughs> to take that next step that we have been wanting to take. And I promise you, you will stop in your journey again. It's natural. But there is something burning on our hearts there is truly change in the air. Whether or not you believe in Obama's politics, there is change. I hear over and over and over again, there is hope and I'm so glad that the bickering is ending. I don't know about you, but you know, growing up wasn't always the most Ozzy and Harriet for me. And I just sometimes wanted the bickering to stop. The bickering can stop if we believe it can stop. And I'm not talking just about a global level, but I'm talking about our levels with one another. Movement can happen. How many of us were told growing up, you cannot fight City Hall? Troy, you didn't get that message, did you? He just said, heck with that, I'll just chain myself to City Hall. <laughs> but every time we speak the truth, we say, here I am, God. Every time we tell our story, we say, here I am, God. Every time we tell a relative, I know that over Christmas, there was, it wasn't real comfortable for some of us because some of us spoke of our stories to our relatives who we only see but once a year. And some of those stories were, guess what I did over summer vacation? I got married. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen? And some of our relatives didn't want to hear it, but you stood up and spoke your truth. Some of you got to spend the holidays with your children who hadn't spent holidays with you since you transitioned. And you lived your truth in love. Amen? Here I am, God, just as I am. Every time we take those little steps, when we say that we are going to risk rather than regret. Every time we say, I'm going to take a little risk rather than regret, what's that? It can be going to City Hall on February 12th. It can be saying, I love you. It can be saying, I love myself. I love myself. When we decide to take the risks rather than regrets, we say no to what is holding us back. We say no to what is holding us back and we listen to the seraphs in our life. We all need seraphs, don't we? Those multitasking angels to remind us that we deserve to be in the presence of God, that we deserve, we deserve to live life fully because we don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. We don't, so let us live life fully. You know, Martin Luther King was just 26 years old. Oh, that's a common age to call out prophets, isn't it? <laughs> when Rosa Parks decided not to get up from her seat. And President-elect Obama wrote about him. He wasn't a president of the United States and at no time in his life did he hold a public office. He was not a hero of foreign wars. He never had much money and while he lived, he was reviled at least as much as he was celebrated. And by his own accounts, he was a man frequently racked with doubt, a man not without flaws, a man who, like Moses before him, more than once questioned, why had he been chosen for this arduous task? The task of leading a people to freedom, the task of healing, of healing festering wounds of a nation, 
of a nation's original sin. And yet he led a nation, and through words he gave voice to the voiceless, and through deeds he gave courage to the faint of heart. And by dint of vision and determination, and most of all, faith in the redeeming power of love. He endured the humiliation of arrest, the loneliness of a prison cell, the constant threats to his life until he finally inspired a nation to transform himself and begin to live up to the meaning of its creed. And I add to that, he heard the voice of God and despite his humanness, he said, here I am God. Here I am. Here I am. We are being prompted in this series to be reminded that it's never too late for a fresh start. It is never too late to reclaim what is lost. It is never too late to make changes in your life, in your business, in your school, in your relationships. It is never too late to come out of the closet. It is never too late to be who God created you to be. Never, 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 never. The only thing that stops us is us. Because in Isaiah we are told we, that we are in the presence of God. I am telling you today you are in the presence of God. It is only us who doesn't necessarily want to believe that we have the strength to make the decisions that we need to make in our family, in our life, and with our friends. So this is a historic week <laughs> because we're going to go home and we are going to pray and meditate we are going to watch the parades and we are going to listen to the speeches. We are going to listen to common people. We are going to listen to ourselves. And most of all, we are going to listen to God. Because God doesn't just want you. God needs you. Needs you to take the next step. Needs you to take the next step. Whatever it is, little or big, or somewhere in between. Let us live our lives fully. Let us heal the wounds of our past. We are called to be purified, to receive the forgiveness that is freely offered to us. We are called to choose risks over regret. We are called to choose urgency over complacency. And Jesus is calling us forward like he called his disciples forward, to live transformed lives. Jesus calls us, as God called Yahweh, live a transformed life. So with all of those who go before us, all of the prophets that we know their names, I want you to add yours to the list of the prophets. Because all a prophet is, is somebody who challenges the way it is, challenges injustice, challenges the world when love is not present. A prophet is the one who brings love to where there is no love and there is despair. We are prophets. Happy birthday to all of the prophets in our midst. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. We thank you. We thank you for being in your midst right now. We thank you for taking the veil off of our eyes to see you more clearly. We thank you for purifying our lips, our heart, our mind, and our soul. We thank you for forgiving us. We thank you for allowing us to take the next steps that are holding us back to truly taking the new beginning with you. So I ask blessings upon each and every one of us as we allow ourselves to hear this word more fully, to celebrate this week completely, and to know that in all of it, you are present with us. Blessings in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.